2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. We're going to read one scripture. You don't have to stand. You can say it if you want to or, or stand. stand. Oh, yeah. This says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. You can be seated. Does that sound like today? Does that sound like the day that we're living in? When you have a 20 year old man walk into a grade school and shoot 20 children, shoot six adults into a grade school. On the same day, you have an eight year old in Oklahoma who's cooking up an attempt to kill everybody in his school, trying to talk other little children to lead other little children into the gymnasium or to the auditorium to kill them. In the same place in another part of the world, another man runs into a room and stabs 20 some children with a knife. Perilous times. You know what the word peril means? It means the same word in Greek as it does in, in the Webster's, danger. Dangerous. Right on the verge of dying. Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come they have no answers brother Rick I was watching this Fox News and I was watching this lady Megan Kelly she's a reporter and I've seen her on Fox News if you've watched Fox you've probably seen her for the last 10 20 years or whatever she's been on there and she was so bewildered and I'm just paraphrasing she said how much worse does it have to get See, she starts thinking back about the first school shooting. Some student who was mad shot some other students. And she starts thinking about, in her mind, you know what she's thinking about? Look how bad that it's got. That it's no longer people angry with one another, shooting one another. Now it's somebody killing the innocent. Now it's somebody walking in did you ever think in your lifetime that you would ever experience and see that on television? That some 20 year old man would walk into a school and kill 25 to 10 year olds? Kids that's in a desk, they're sitting there being seated. Kid, they're no different than us. They send our children to school. We send our children off to school and think that we have a, an amount of safety where there is no safety in this world. The world can provide nobody no safety. And this lady, Megan Kelly, who's covered suicides, who's covered events, was so bewildered that I think they took her off the air. She becomes so choked up, she, didn't, she couldn't fathom it in her mind that she was asking a psychiatrist about how much worse does it got to get? And I'm just paraphrasing what she is saying. She's saying, what else can worse can happen? Well, I promise you there's worse that can happen. There's more that's gonna happen until he comes because they reject him. And I'm not talking about the human flesh, I'm talking about the inside of a man rejects that call. They've been rejecting and been rejecting and now we're so far out in darkness that anything could happen at any time. My baby could go to school and some, but I pray to God. See, that's what happens is, is how many people are praying to God over their children before they go to school or are they too overtaken with things of the day? Is their mind upon, upon getting on the computer first thing? And is their mind upon how many friends they got to, 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 to type in something to tell to? Or has their job overtaking their mind? Is their, their argument with their spouse overtaking their mind? Have they, not, have they forgot to pray and say, God, protect my child at the schoolhouse. God, protect them on the school bus going down the road. God, protect Jamie Jr. as he goes over to the Logan to work in, to work at the state police station. That's why I'm saying we've become so toiled as a society. We've become so overrun with so many things, Brother Rick, that, that, the, that, the, that the call for to get down on our knees and to ask God to touch our youngins, to go with them into the schoolhouse. How many people that day, and I'm not pointing fingers, but how many people that day made that request? It's scary, isn't it? And, it, and there was a time when people did those things. When mothers and fathers and children got together and prayed. 
before they made a move in the household, before they made a loan, before they bought a car, now we just, and I'm guilty, now we just run out and get that loan and we don't seek God. And we find ourselves in such a, a frivolous state that we're overtaken with bills, we're overtaken with things. Why? Because we didn't seek him first. This know also then that the last day's perilous time shall come. Daniel said that in the end, men shall run to and fro. Look at it, they're running to and fro. It's not something to look forward to, it's something to look at. And knowledge shall be increased. But if they can take a chip this big and put millions and millions of mega, mega ounces of knowledge into something this big, men shall run to and fro, knowledge shall be increased, but what? They shall not retain God in their knowledge. This is where we're at. We're living in a day, that day has come to pass. We live in a day when people or preachers are still behind pulpits telling people that the worst is, is that the tribulations yet to come or, or the worst, you're living in it. You're living in gross darkness. Isaiah said, arise, let thy light shine. For gross darkness is upon the land. It's gross darkness. The rejection of him. The rejection of the revealed word. I mean, you have a news reporter who's seen the most horrific. She just didn't get the job at Fox News one day, walk in and said, I want to be Megyn Kelly. I want to be on TV. She had to go to the, to the most unimaginable places on the face of the planet and report some of the most unimaginable things you could think about. Nobody walks in on top. So this lady has seen the worst of the worst. She's probably seen drug dealers get killed. She's probably seen drug deals go down. You don't get to be on Fox. You don't get to be the number one on Fox or CNN or ABC because you walked in and said, I want the job. You gotta pay your dues. And this lady's paid her dues. And she gets choked up over this event. She realized that it's out of control. And it is out of control in the world. That's the cosmos that we preached about before. Chaos. They don't retain God in any of their knowledge. And you know what the psychiatrist, he said, he looked at her and, and I'm just paraphrasing him, he, he wanted to blame it on the mental health society. That, that we don't recognize that people are mentally ill quick enough or, or we don't treat them quick enough. Well, there's never been an explosion of mental illness like there is on the face of the planet now. Why? Because you reject him. And I know maybe none of you have, but other people hear this on the internet. It's the rejection of the revealed word of God. They rejected the revealed word when he came in their day. They tried to make everybody a good Pharisee. They tried to make everybody a good Essene. They tried to make everybody a good Sadducee. And they tried to make everybody a good Greek philosopher. And they tried to make everybody what they thought that they should be. When the revealed word was walking right in front of them. And they rejected the revealed word. And what happened, Brother Jamie? They got turned off. They got shut out. They could no longer take part. And look what's happened to them. They've been killed in death camps. They've been burned at the ashes. They've been rejected for 2,000 years. They've been the scourge of the earth because they rejected the revealed word as it walked by. And as a society, we reject the revealed word. And I don't want to say we because if it's open to me, I want to run into it. Amen. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth into it, and are what? And are safe. If there's ever a day that we need to be safe, it's in this day. Because there's somebody on drugs driving down the road right next to you. You better believe that they are. I work out there, I know. You know what? I have seen the most horrible things probably you can imagine. And the other day, I got in such a state watching that stuff on TV that I didn't know if I could go to work yesterday. I said, Lord, I don't know if I could walk in on seeing 20 dead babies laying in a classroom and keep my sanity. We need to pray for them first responders. We need to pray for them policemen. You know what? This is a ripple effect, people. This just isn't one event. 
There's a, there's, you ever threw a pond, you ever threw a stone into a pond and seen the ripples? And you throw a bigger rock and there's bigger ripples? Well, this is a boulder. And people's gonna commit suicide over these things. People are gonna be depressed over these things. People's children are dead. There's Christmas presents under a tree that nobody's gonna open. And people just keep on going about their business. It's time to stop. If you're listening on the internet, it's time to stop and get a hold of him. It's time to stop and let all these things go by. And this may go over a million people's head, but if one person hears this, stop and get a hold of him. Get a hold of the one that died on the cross. Get a hold of the one that said, cast all your cares upon me. Preachers, quit preaching your doctrine. Start preaching about the one that died on the cross. Start preaching about a lady that was overtaken with the issue of blood and cast her sin upon him and she became whole. It's time to throw dogmas and creeds out the windows. And this may not get may go over a million people, but if one catches it, it'll be worth it all. If it stops one person listening to this on the internet from walking into school and killing somebody, it'll be worth it all. He says, burnt like a fire in my soul, not in my emotions. My emotions can't even handle this. In my soul for a week. Since this happened, Brother Rick, this is just burnt, burnt because they want answers. I had to quit watching it. They want answers. They want some psychiatrist to come in and tell them why. They want some police analyst to tell them why. I'm with, I can only tell them is that You've been told. You've been told. Paul said this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, but yet you walk away. They've been told. Listen to what I'm telling you. They've been told the word has been declared. It's no strange thing. But yet they look bewildered and they look upset, Brother Jamie. When, they, when they're on the TV and the reporter scratched her head and the psychiatrist scratched her head because they can't touch it. They can't fathom that. And people build up hatred for that 20 year old man. That 20 year old man was overtaken by devils. By devils. How many people are gonna stand and proclaim that? They're afraid of what society will say about them. They're afraid that, that somebody will call them a nut. If they say that there's devils, well, let me tell you what, there's a fourth dimension. We live in the third, there's fourth dimension. And in that run angels and demons. And whatsoever you sow to, that's what you shall reap of. That's where the word of God comes into effect. Paul said this, if you sow to the world, you're gonna reap things of the world. And if you sow to God, if you sow to the spirit, you'll reap things, you'll reap things of the spirit. Well, most people wanna sow to the things of the world and look where we're at. Scientists know about the fourth dimension. Did you know that? That's what television waves travel through. That next dimension, it's unseen by the natural eye. But man, you can watch that television and be overtaken by a spirit in a minute. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I got depressed, clinically depressed, watching that stuff because it was transmitted in the fourth dimension into my living room. It's on the computer. It's transmitted into our homes. Amen, the devil seeking whom he may devour. And I'm sure that nobody, I'm sure there may be people in here that say, brother, I understand these things, but they, somebody may be on this thing over here that don't. Somebody maybe will listen in. Somewhere will be clicking around the internet and click on this message. And not because I preach it, but maybe they'll hear something about a God that died on a cross that'll save them from going into killing somebody. Amen, that'll save them when they're down and out and somebody they know has died and they don't know how to handle it, that they can understand that a God is able, that he never left them, that they left him. They left him, he never left them. It's scary. It's awful, the things that, that we encounter in our day. We live in perilous times. Listen, he said that, that men shall be lovers of their own selves. Amen, can you say amen? What do people love? I mean, they, they love themselves more than they love their own spouse. They will love, they will pamper themselves and let their spouse fall by the wayside. They will take care of their own mental illness and not pray for their spouse. 
and not love their spouse and do what they can for their spouse. They will take care of their own physical illness but forget their spouse. And the Bible says that a man and woman shall become one twain. The rejection of the revealed word. Lovers of them own selves. They'll love themselves over their kids. Amen. And you may say, and I know none of y'all do, because I know some of y'all personally, Rick's like me, he babies his too much. I do. I, I, my boys come up, they laugh at me at the hospital. They'll come up the other day, too. I'm coming right in the road. Can I get money for lunch? One works there and works one on ambulance. You know what I did? I opened her right up and gave her money. If it would have been my last 20, I would have gave it to them. So how do people not take care of their children? It's perilous times, that's why. How do they not love their children more than their self? Jesus loved us more than he loved himself. So much that he gave himself a ransom. A purchased, he was a pur- we were a purchased bride. Nothing was a gift to us, it was purchased. He wanted to say amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that what? Bought my liberty. It bought my liberty. Abraham coming back from the slaughter of the kings was going to be given stuff by what? Sodom and Gomorrah, the kings. What he do? He rejected it. As a type of Christ, he rejected it. He said, if I, buy, if I get it, I'm going to purchase it. And the devil offered Jesus the entire world and he rejected it. He said, if I'm going to get it, I'm going to purchase it with my own blood. But people don't want that anymore. They want to gather into, they want to get up here and they want to make sure you got a psychology degree before you get up here. You better have the Holy Ghost. You start dealing with people's emotions, fears. You start dealing with their home life. You better have the Holy Ghost. You better not have your ideas and what you think about it. You are parts of the scripture that you think pertain, but you need to have the Holy Ghost before you can counsel. You don't need an LLD. You don't need a doctorate. You need the Holy Ghost. People don't want the Holy Ghost. They don't want it. They don't want to speak in tongues. They don't want to have the revealed words put to them. They don't want anything anymore. And then the other side says, well, it's my way, and if you don't do it my way, then you ain't got it. Well, guess what? You ain't got it either. You, if the pinnacle of your preaching is to give somebody your doctrine and your thoughts and not tell them about the blood of Jesus Christ, then you're lost. I wonder about your call. And we all can err and make mistakes. Me and Brother Rick's been caught up in things before. But praise be to God. Praise be to God that he helped us see that the most important thing was the shed blood of Jesus Christ. To get under the shower of the shed blood and to be filled with the Holy Ghost to have his spirit upon you, dwelling in you because in this last day, you'll never be raised up if that revealed word is not inside of you. We're in the days of Christmas and what did Mary say when the angel came to her? She said, be it unto me according to thy word. Whether it cuts against my flesh, whether I get stoned and called a whore, whether I get stoned and called an adulteress, be it unto me according to thy word. And that's the same spirit that this bride will have now. That she'll still be meek and she'll still be humble. She may be called names, she may be cast out, she may be threw off with the things that she preaches, but she'll say, Be it unto me, Lord, according to thy word. This is the preaching, not because I'm preaching it or Rick preaches it or Bert preaches it, but this is the preaching that's needed in the land. The Holy Ghost. Oh, psychiatrist, the Bible says, where is the wise? Where's the scribe? Where's the disputer of this world? God said, have I not chosen the foolish things of this world? What? To confound the wise. How then a little preacher that don't have a high school diploma can preach and save your soul? And now that he can take one that thinks he's educated and bring him down to touch you. That's God. Paul was an educated man. He said he had to forget everything he knew. He had to forget the law, forget everything he knew, the angst, the is, the owls, and he had to just preach the word. They rejected, rejected, and I'm not talking about a human. I'm talking about the inside of a man. 
I'm talking about a, a church that, that wants to make you a good Episcopalian. That wants to make you a really good Baptist. Make you a really good Jew. Make you a really good Pentecostal. Make you a really good Jesus only. I want to be a really good Christian. I want to be a really good Christian. I want to do really good. I want God to do something in me. I don't want to make anybody nothing. Jesus said, "What do you do? You search the world over and over, and you say, and what do you do? And you bring and you just make a proselyte out of them." When you make him an Essene or a Pharisee or a Pentecostal, when you're identified, when somebody says, they just ask you, they say, where do you go to church? You say, well, I'm a Pentecostal or I'm a Jesus only. You need to get converted. I'm a Christian. I'm a worshiper and a follower of Jesus Christ that died on the cross, that came back on the day of Pentecost, that dwells in his people, walks in his people, that makes me love people that don't love me, that makes me cry for a world there's preachers today that's preaching things, I guarantee you. It's their own fault. It's their own, no. I heard prophets say it's because they've been deceived. They've been deceived. And we're the only link they got. We're the only link that they got. And we want to make you a really good Pentecostal. We want to, the first time you come in the door and you're overtaken with drugs, you're overtaken with, mental illness runs in our world, people. I work in the field. We, most people we see in the ER are mentally ill. They don't realize it. They think they're sick. A lot of them ain't even sick. It's mental illness. We're overrun with it. This sister knows she works there. Not just there, everywhere. They got commercials that subliminally make you think you're sick. Listen to some of them, and I want you to listen to this. There's some medicine. Now, you look at this old baby. Now, how could you hurt that? Look at that. Now, there's something wrong. Something wrong in the mentality of men. They got commercials out there that it says, take this for your often depression. But a side effect of it is suicide if it don't work. Well, I'm gonna give you something for your depression. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. It'll not cause you to commit suicide. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying if something like that happens to a real mentally ill person that's got something that they're going to hell. I just can't, I don't know. That, what they do before God, that's between them and God. Because mental illness is a real thing. But what I'm not going to point you to is some medicine that only works for a part time. And if you take those things, fine. And if they help you, fine. But the only cure is the Holy Ghost. You get delivered. Now listen to this. You get delivered to something and don't have the Holy Ghost. And then get, you get that demon come back and find that house empty, it brings seven more. And the state of you is worse than it was before. So if you get delivered something, get the Holy Ghost in so it pushes that stuff out. We need a good dose of the Holy Ghost. What's that song they say? Lord, I need a dose, a double dose. But if you're gonna walk out that door here in about 30 minutes, you better have the Holy Ghost. If you ain't sure you got it, turn around on this seat, we'll tarry till you think you got it. I don't care if you flop, speak in tongues, prophesy. I don't care if you just feel the warmness of God move inside of you and move things out. If you ain't got it, if you're on the internet and you ain't got it, drop where you're at and get it because it's the only way of escape. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation that God once was here and man was here, but he sent a mediator between God and man? and shed his blood that the sins of man could be taken upon him that what? He could dwell in man. Not the third person dwell in man, but God himself through the mediator could dwell in man, walk in man, talk in man. Amen, it's time to stop the lies. It's time to just tell the truth. We need the Holy Ghost. The only salvation in the world is the Holy Ghost, the revealed word. I'm gonna use myself as an example. I got so distraught and so upset that if I didn't have the Holy Ghost, I'd have had to go to an ER somewhere and get me a nerve pill. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with those things. But I'm just saying that the revealed word, I had to call up on it. I sure did. But thank God, I just didn't call it out of my mind. It began to protrude from my heart. Just the little things he done for me, like delivering me from, from chewing tobacco. 
that was a real life God experience. It wasn't nothing made up. I went to an altar, I got up, walked to my car, threw it away, and it's like I never chewed it in the first place. Am I saying you're wrong if you don't have that same experience? No. I mean, God does things in his way and in his time. But that's one way for me that I could recall that something supernatural happened in my life. The revealed word was revealed in me like it never happened in the first place. I promise you, like I never stuck a dip in my mouth. When I was backslid, I tried, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, I told you you're done with that. And I got sick as a dog. I said, well, I'm dumb, you know. And the revealed word of, of everything that he's revealed to me, just the little things, dreams that he's gave me, spiritual dreams. If it weren't for those things, Lord knows where I'd be. The revealed parts of the word are more important to me. When I see that he said in the beginning was the word, that I was in the beginning with him. That Solomon said when he made the mountains and the oceans and the seas and he walked up on the ways thereof, I was with him. That by revelation I can see that. Not by my mind, but by revelation I was in him before what? The foundation of the world. That's not a doctrine that I can get out here and sin and act a fool with. It's not once in grace, it's not once in grace and in disgrace. But it's in once in grace, always in grace in the fact that I was in him before the foundation of the world. That he knew my name. That's what you think is that woman shouting over there. When she hears the stars in the sky, she knows that that word star means Messiah brothers. In the Bible, did you know he told Abraham, he said, thy, he said, thy seed will be as the stars of the sky. That word means Messiah brothers. That she's identified with them stars. That's a revelation. An understanding that when you reveal something, the devil can't take it back. You can't reason yourself out of it. That's what old Eve got in trouble with in the beginning was reasoning. You can't reason yourself out of it. You can't pull yourself out of it. But when the revealed were, that's the only thing, Sister Kathy. In this day, whether you're revealed in one paragraph or you're revealed by abundance, that's the only thing that's going to save you mentally, maybe even physically. When something bad happens to you or we see something bad, people, there ain't never been nothing like this on the face of the planet that I can recall. Now, the, the Jews, the Holocaust was horrible. It was horrible. And what happened there, and I don't want to get in trouble on the internet if this goes in the wrong ear, but that's, that's not politically correct, but they rejected him. And they rejected him. What happened in the book of, you see in the book of what, what was it, uh, Isaiah, that the sword went out? You see? Jeremiah said it's a time of Jacob's trouble. And I know they like to teach that as a tribulation, but there's parts of it that's also Jacob's trouble. You don't think that's Jacob's trouble when they're putting them in the ovens and burning them because they're Jews? But it's because of the rejection of the word. And if they didn't escape, then no Gentiles will escape. Look at it. Look in the days of Jesus. They were rejected, rejected, rejected. Turned to what? The Gentiles. Is that what Isaiah said? A people that's not a people. Well, what? They'll, what? They'll love my name. I will give them my name. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Well, look what's happening in this day. You know, all of a sudden you're starting to hear a few Jews pop up and say, I see it. I see it. I see who he is. What's happening? The door's getting shut to the Gentiles. See, that ain't no one thing, click. I've heard people say, click. No, it's just a gradual closing to click. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be so subtle. That rapture's so subtle. Nobody's gonna miss you. They're gonna, there's earthquakes in diverse places right now. Ain't gonna be no planes crash out of the sky. Huh? No, there's earthquakes in diverse places. There's so much mayhem and chaos. There's people killing babies in school. People's minds are overtaken to miss a, a child of God. They ain't gonna miss you. They ain't gonna miss you. Boom. Now, I'm, I'm not preaching you William Brown, but he said, what is it, 1963? He said that 500 people could disappear in 1963 nobody would miss them. 500 people disappearing this day, that's a blink of an eye. But the world's population's doubled since 1963. 
blink of an eye, 500 people. One, one goes over here, one goes over there. A few people still come to the building because in every church there's believers, make believers, and non-believers. And I, I'm not pointing finger. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll be...